You don't like to read? Oh, okay. Well, I don't think this is the video for you then. How's it going? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why reading multiple books at one time, and no, I don't mean physically reading them all at the same time, but making it so you're reading multiple books at the same time is the best way to learn more faster. Let's get into it. So before we jump into it, I wanted to show you real quick actually what I'm talking about. So right now, here's the four books that I'm reading. I actually just finished The Clock Along Now and Crushing It, but I'm still working on these two. What does that mean? How am I doing that and why am I doing that? Now, that's probably what you're wondering. I like to read multiple books at one time and the reason is I like to relate information. If you've ever heard of a commonplace book, it's something Charles Darwin used to use. Many other people throughout the years use it. Ryan Holiday is a major proponent of it for him writing his books. And what it is, is it's something where you can put all of, it's a commonplace for all of the knowledge that you've been acquiring through books, through podcasts, through audio, through whatever you're going to do. For me, it's a place to store snippets and thoughts from each of these books and then relate and push them together. See, I like to read multiple books because what it allows you to do is it really allows you to find the similarities and the commonalities in life, identify them and learn better each book because you're tying all the information together and then holistically processing it. So before we get into this, if you don't like to read, I need to talk to you. We need to have a brief one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know what, come here, we're gonna have a private conversation over here. Reading is one of the best things that you could ever do. There's a quote that I heard recently and it really stuck with me and it was, reading is one of the greatest thefts known to man because you can take a man's 50 to 100 years and read it in a matter of weeks and that's a work of their life that you've taken and you've been able to digest and put into your life in a matter of weeks. Now, why should you be reading multiple books at the same time? Well, it may seem hard to keep track. It's a methodology and a tool that I've used for learning for a long time now, and I think it's something that could definitely benefit most people. Here's the reason why. When you were in school, do you remember when all your classes aligned and you had history, but history was talking about something from science and science was talking about something from math and it all seemed like everything fit together and you were building this awesome puzzle and you had all these pieces coming in that you knew where to put where. And so subsequently you started to do better in every single class. Oh, you didn't? Oh. Well, if you did, and if you didn't, you can start to understand that when you can connect information to each other, you can drastically improve your ability to understand, process, and store that information. So when we think about it from another angle, right, there's a trick to memorizing card decks. And what you do is you take each card and you put it in a room around the house, and then you assign a name to each card. And you understand that, oh, Jerry's in the kitchen on the third floor. That means it's a three of hearts. I don't know, Jerry's a big heart or something like that. Anyways, that ideology behind memorizing through association, visualization, and really storing and tying information together can come from many different sources. That's why in school, it's easy to tie information together when all classes align. And that's why curriculum should be set up where you're learning about a math problem the same time you're learning about the historical figure who created it, and the same time you're learning about science and how the historical figure who created that math problem was influenced influencing someone else to create another uh, scientific discovery. If it was structured that way, then school would function a lot better and we would really understand the information that gets thrown at us and projected from the teacher who's distilling it from the book. Now, this methodology behind learning is a lot different than what most people are used to because not only is it active reading where you do need to take notes and you need to understand what you're doing, which is how reading nonfiction works should be, but it requires you to think about complex thoughts and take them across multiple different subjects. With each of those books that I showed you a minute ago, they all have different subjects. Crushing it is about marketing, it's about learning about social media and how it works. The Long Now is about time and understanding that 
just this 100 year brief period that most people live, maybe we'll live longer, I believe in the singularity, I don't know if you do, is something that goes on forever and we have to realize that there's a ramification from what we do now until later. The better angels of our nature is about how society is actually becoming more and more peaceful and violence is decreasing every single year, yet the media portrays it as one of the worst times ever. And it's not to say that we can't slip back into that, but we are moving to a more peaceful era. And the alphabet versus the goddess is the difference between image and word and how like you can, there's certain images and feminine energy that displaces masculine energy and word and the logic. And that's not to say both men and women do have feminine energy within them, but the differences in thinking, the differences in our stories that we've told ourselves for thousands of years are portrayed through the difference between image and words. And so each of those books is a different subject, but each of those books has common themes. In the long now, we move back into the old times and how there was a lot more violence a long time ago, which is coincidentally being brought up in Steven Pinker's The Better Angels of Our Nature. Those two pieces allowed me to tie the information together and thus process it better, which makes the main reason for reading these books, finding the commonalities in each book and learning to refine that high leverage skill of, of pattern identification and getting more crystal clear on how to see patterns, utilize them to your benefit, and in this case, solidify information that's appearing in multiple books. It's also a methodology of triangulation of information, although this isn't the same thing that you're moving towards. You're not trying to identify if a news source was correct, but instead you're identifying these patterns that form in all these different books and thus getting more solidification on your actual perception of reality and what is occurring around you. So that's really it. Now this may be a weird skill and I'm not saying this is actually a higher leverage skill. This just falls under a skill of being able to understand how to tie information together better and learn with not only visual spatial memory because that's the card trick we were talking about, but in a way that allows you to associate things and learn them better. Just like when you smell the perfume and it takes you back to when you were a kid or when you chew a type of bubble gum and it takes you back, you listen to a song and it brings you to a memory. All these things are ways to tie information together. This is a way to tie information to information and process it at the same time. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you're reading multiple books or you have a book that I should be reading or you just think this is a cool idea, put a comment below. Give us a like if it helped you in any way and please subscribe so I can make more videos like this in the future. Again, thanks for watching and we'll talk soon.